So we now know from the previous videos why we'd want to use Azure Service Fabric and how to set it up on our Windows machine. So in this video, we're gonna look at how to get started with Service Fabric on our local machine by setting up our first stateless service. So to do this, we need to make sure we have Service Fabric running on our machine. But to check this, we can just go to the Service Fabric Explorer at localhost 19080. And this should load up and it should show us all the applications and services on our cluster, the nodes on our cluster, and what the internal Service Fabric services are running. So these services are part of the core Service Fabric. So the next step is to open up our Visual Studio 2019 that we also installed in the last video. So what we want to do is we want to create a new project and we want to create a Service Fabric application project here. In the search bar at the top, we can just type Service Fabric or just Service. And we can see here, the fourth one here, a Service Fabric application, which is exactly what we want to do. So we click Next. And you give the project a name, we'll just call it New Service Fabric Application. And the framework here says .NET Framework, but all the services we'll have on our Service Fabric application will be in .NET Core. So I'm actually not quite 100% sure why it says Framework here, but when we actually create our services inside our application, they will all be running .NET Core 3. So click Create. And here we are given some options on what kind of service we want to create. So we can see here .NET Core, Stateless Service, Stateful Service, Actor Service, Stateless ASP.NET Core, which is basically an API, or Stateful ASP.NET Core, which is a Stateful API. So for simplicity, we're just going to start off with a Stateless Service. So we'll just call it First Stateless Service. And we'll click Create. And this should create our Service Fabric application project with a stateful service. So we click Create and we'll see what happens. So it's just creating our new Service Fabric application now. Okay, so once that's created, this window in Visual Studio should open up. It will give us a link to the Service Fabric documentation website here. So we can just close that for now. And we can see that just like any C Sharp project, we have a solution folder here and we've got a number of different projects inside it. So we first we have this new Service Fabric application project, which is our application. And then we have our stateful service project, which is called First Stateless Service. So as we can see, this is the our application and an application can have multiple services. Those services can be stateful, they can be stateless, they can be APIs. So if we click on services here, we can see we've only got one service registered in our application, the first stateless service. There is also an application manifest file in our application, which contains all the details and config for our application. And it contains references to the service that we're using. In this case, you can see the reference here to the first stateless service type. This is in our default services, which means this will be created when our application starts up. So those are the two most important parts of the application is that the registered service, and then of course the application manifest XML. There's a number of other folders here, which we can talk about in future videos. In our first stateless service project, we can see that Visual Studio has created a number of C Sharp files for us. It's created the program file, which is the entry point into our program. And all we're saying here is we're registering our service with Service Fabric, and then we're just sleeping on the thread for an infinite time so the service keeps running. This first stateless service.cs class is our main class and this class has a number of important methods in it that we'll briefly talk about here but expand upon in future videos. First I'm just going to tidy up the automatic commenting that's in this file just to make it easier to see. So now that we have cleaned up our first stateless service class, we can see several things. First, we can see that it inherits from stateless service. So this is what's telling us that this is a service fabric service. We always have our constructor and we have a number of other methods here. We have something called create service instant listeners, which is an overwrite. This is a method that we won't touch for now, but allows us to enable communication between different service fabric services running on the cluster. We also have a run async method which kicks off any tasks we want to run. So any background tasks or any startup tasks we're running, we can run inside this run async method. 
Here we can see that the default code has created a while true loop that will never stop unless the cancellation token is cancelled. And we are using the service event source, which is a way to log out messages. And we're just simply writing the working zero and giving the number of iterations. And then we're waiting for one second and writing the next iteration, having incremented it here. The final thing to note about the code in our first stateless service is this package root. So this package root contains a service manifest XML that like the application manifest XML contains all the config and settings for our service. So in the service manifest, we can see several things. We can see the version of the service that we're running as well as the version of the code, which is the executable plus the version of our config. So the executable that will be run inside our cluster is actually first stateless service.exe. And Service Fabric services are made up of three main parts. They're made up of a code part, which has a version, a config part, which also has a version, and there's also a data part, which is any data the service is using. And we can talk about that in a later video. So next we want to run our service. So there's two options here. We can either publish our service to our local cluster, or we can debug. The only difference is that when we debug the cluster, we're basically attaching a debugger to it, which allows us to set breakpoints and do everything that the debugger inside Visual Studio would usually allow. So what we'll do is we'll go into our first stateless service class. And as we said, the run async will be called once the service starts. So this is where we can start any background tasks. In this case, we're simply just logging with an infinitely running loop. So we can set a breakpoint there. And what we'll do is we'll right click and go down to debug. And this will start a new instance of our application, which has our service running inside it. So just click start new instance. And what we can do now is we can go back to our service fabric explorer. And hopefully we will see our very first service fabric application being built, packaged and deployed to our local cluster and will appear here in our applications section. You may need to be running Visual Studio in administrator mode in order to successfully debug an application. So if it's not working, make sure you're running in administrator mode. So if we look at our applications, we can now see that the new Service Fabric application type has appeared. And the application type is like a relationship between an object and a class. The application type defines the application and then we will have an instance of that application. So we can see we have the application type and then the application itself. And inside the application, there are a number of services. So we can see here in our new service fabric application, we have our first stateless service. So this is our service. And we can see that here, this is the partition and stateless services will only have a single partition. And this partition is running on node zero and we're running a single node cluster. So this is the only replica running on our cluster. In the next video, we'll talk more about replicas and how they work with stateless services. But for now, we only need to know that there's only a single replica running on our OneNote cluster. So if we jump back to Visual Studio, we can see that our breakpoint in Run Async has been hit. We can get rid of that breakpoint and just click Continue. And we should start running through this infinite loop. Service Fabric has opened up this Diagnostics event windows where we can see all of the logging through our service event source that we have here. So any message that's logged out through service event source will appear in our diagnostic events windows. So as expected, every second we can see those iterations count up. We can also see a number of other events that are emitted by Service Fabric itself, giving us information on various parts of our cluster, like failovers between replicas or state transitions, things like that. So I hope this video has given you a very quick overview of how we deploy our first stateless service to Service Fabric. As we said in the next video, we'll be looking in more depth at how these stateless services work and how they work in a cluster that has more than one node. If you like the video, please subscribe to the channel and like the video. Thanks again. See you next time.